What what would happen is maybe one family would have two like this, but they needed four. Well, they would trade with somebody else. How big would these feed sacks be? Mm, about that. And they were full of? Flour. Sugar? Sugar. Cornmeal. You know, just things like that. And they came in different colors. Yeah. And this is back when? Hmm. Back in the 30s. And people would make dresses with it. Mm -hmm. So they would say, I want this dress. And yeah. so somebody else would have that sack. and They, they, they would trade some another sack for it. So when they made these dresses, the dresses were patchwork to some extent. I mean, there would be all the same material, but yeah. you never had a section of fabric that was big enough to make a full dress out of like you would now. No, not you'd have to have maybe four or five sacks. Wow. And then you would, and so it's called feed mill. Yeah, feed feed sacks. <laughs> now I remember I a friend. I remember a woman, a Mexican woman I knew, and she made uh, uh, quilts. Oh gosh, this is a long time ago. Out of the bags that they used to bring. Yeah, they used to bring the flour in, but it wasn't yeah. pretty like this. It oh, was really. It was just pattern, well, or it was it was muslin kind of. Well, see this this fabric right here mm -hmm. is a uh, uh, solid feed sack. Right. So it was a color, it was, it was like a... Yeah, they just didn't put a print on it. Mm -hmm. So these are all done by hand, for anybody who's watching this. All this piece, this is piecing. That's done by hand. That's not mm -hmm. applique. It's sewn on with a sewing machine, right? Right. Yeah, not by hand hand, but it's a sewing machine. Right. And then they would... Um, um, and this is just like a scrap quilt? No, not really. What would you call that? Just a uh, mosaic of some sort? I don't know. I Does guess. That I don't even remember what... The name of this was, but you used to pay, you used to, and this is machine oops. quilted. So okay, so anybody who's paying attention here, so that what they we used to do is, well, what Peggy would do is they would, well, when you're growing up, you didn't take it to have it quilted. You had a a quilting. Quilted it at home. Yeah, with a and with a, but they didn't do a loop. They did a like my mom used to do with a big frame. Yeah, and then you just turn it as you went. Yeah. And then this right here, this kind of quilt is an applique quilt, right. which means that it's it's uh, the fabric's put on top and, and it's then, sewed on. Yeah, you applique. Applique it on. And then this is this is quilted piecework. Yeah. And then this is again taken down into a, a machine. They have these really large machines that are as wide as the as the uh, quilt. Yeah. And they have patterns. Mm -hmm. And you can get all different kinds of patterns. So you can you see can, how it has this kind of pattern. It's computer run. And then these have, like, this has all different kinds of patterns, too. Yeah. And then you would take them and you put them in the machine, and the machine would just go slowly through and just do the pattern. So it's done. So there's a whole style of yeah. quilting by machine or quilting by oh, yeah. hand. And, really computer-operated is what yeah. it is. They put that design in the computer and... They get it stretched and, mm -hmm. every, you know, layered and uh, let it go. And then they'd have to roll it. And now in between here, what, what's inside? Uh, it's it's like most of what I have in my quilts is uh, warm and natural cotton batting. Right. So these are all machine washable. Yes. Now, and when the quilts I have at home, you were telling me about whenever... You came out and you visited me. A lot of the quilts that my mom had are from the 30s. Mm -hmm, probably. Probably the 30s. 40s. And inside, you can see where it's kind of ripped and worn away. Mm -hmm. You can see actual cotton. Yeah. Like you went outside and picked it and then took the little knits. What do they call those? Well, they used to have cotton two. Balls. The cotton balls. No, they used to have. A, the curl? What do they what call they it? they call carding. Carding, that's what it was. And you'd put the cotton in between these, and then you'd, you know, mm -hmm. do it like that. If I go up to the Ozark Family Center, they'll show me how it's done. Oh, yeah, they would. Yeah. And then you take it, and you would, you'd have to make it nice and flat. Yeah. So that you could get it in here. Yeah. And then you sew it in, and it would not be matted. And that's right. how they did it. And this is how... Um, and you were saying that people made dresses out of these this fabric stuff, yeah. these little squares. They would yeah. so and so, yeah, yeah. five sacks. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, make a dress. They made aprons. They made bonnets. Everything out of this. Fabric. So this was in the 30s. What? How long would it take to piece a quilt by machine? Something like this would be pretty simple. It's just squares. If you had it all cut out, you could do it in several days. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it wouldn't take you long. And that's, I like to have it all cut out. My mom's favorite part was piecing. She loved to piece. Oh, yeah. Just piecing, putting together. I think she has a little OCD. I think <laughs> probably all do. And I think just putting it in order was kind of fun. Yeah. Now, over here in my bedroom, let me show you this, you guys. Oh, here's Everett's. Look at this bed. Sorry, Everett, just taking a picture of your bed. Just don't <laughs> panic. Don't panic. Okay, here's mine, my bed. Look at this. Now, Peggy was saying that this was... Uh, from uh, every month they had a quilt, a square, right? Is that what you said? Right. And uh, it was a city thing or a... Kansas. Kansas. So if you look at these, this one says diversity. Let's see if you can see it down here in the corner. Wherever my finger is. Well, diversity. This one says community. So this is applique. Uh -huh. So like the city, all the women who were... This one's Justice. All the women in town would probably make the same kind of quilt, right? Yeah. And so there's probably bunches of these. And they would pick the fabric colors, or did they tell you? They told you. I got it as close as I could to the color they suggested. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at this, you can see this is applique, again. And um, then... You take it in and you have it machined. If you look at this back side, you can see it a little bit better. How it's machined on here. And you can see, you would figure out what, see? There, Peggy, there she is, 2003. Three. Just amazing. And this would take a lot longer because you had to yeah, hand sew yeah. this. Uh, placement was probably as hard as anything. You know, getting it squared on that block. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Just look at that. And they wash up really easy. Mm -hmm. I think I've washed this probably twice or three times. Well, this is the guest bedroom, right? Well, it had been on Everett's bed. Oh. But we got new uh, mattresses and it won't fit on his. Oh, this is a this is a full. This, no, that's that's queen. This is a queen. Yeah, because I made it so that it put the larger border on it, so I could use it as a spread. That's oh yeah, that's another thing about some of these quilts. Like you could take a twin and you just add more to the sides to give it to more of a whatever you wanted to do. Right. I think they're just trying to confuse it. Okay, so tell me, this is your little. This is. This is so professional, you guys. You walk in here, and this is not a bedroom. This is Peggy's, what would you call sewing it? Sewing room. This is your sewing room, and this is your display yeah. for your bed to whatever. Now, what are you going to do if you get a queen in here? You got to... Oh, I'm not going to get a queen. You're not going to do more... F you would just add another row, and you just would fold it off to the side or something if yeah, you're doing you a queen. Yeah, you would just keep adding a row. Okay, so let's see what we have here. This is how many... This is not a star... What is this called? I think... I, I'm not sure. It's I don't know if it's called a bouquet. I think this is what it's supposed to be. Now, see, this one is hand quilted. This isn't machine quilted. And you did this? I didn't quilt it. <laughs> oh, it's not machine quilted. But you can see, this is how my mom's quilts are. Yeah. A lot of them like this, because this is what they would do, is they would just go inside the little things like this, and yeah. that and that was how it was quilted. Yeah. It wasn't fancy with the this swirly stuff. This was probably quilted in Craig, Missouri, at a ladies' church group that done quilting for whoever needed to quilt. Right. Quilt. But you pieced it. Yeah. Okay, you pieced this, and how long ago was this? Oh, gosh. I thought, this might, be, I thought this might be your project. That's why it was sitting in here. No. Now, these are my favorites, I think. This is a string quilt. Yes. It's real fun. 
string quilts and you can see now here's this is really different now look at the backing of this and you said you got this from Ramona it, she gave me the idea yeah okay so a lot of time all the quilts my mom used to make when she'd piece them the back was it was sewn on to newspaper and you yeah. can see some old newspaper see here's how they sewed it together yeah. right in here and uh, the newspaper would be peeled off you know you'd peel it off when you're done but that's how you would do it because the pieces of the newspaper were the size of the well like you cut out a you know if you're doing all diamonds or all squares yeah. you had it on a piece of newspaper right. and then you would take the newspapers and you kind of would sew it to, okay that's how it was done but what this is is this is a dryer sheet right so you're sewing it onto a dryer sheet and then you could take it and put it in the wash machine or dryer mm -hmm. and it's 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 sturdy enough to oh, do that yeah. And you don't have to remove it. Yeah, you don't have to remove it like you would with the newspaper. And see, this hasn't been quilted yet. This is just a pieced quilt. That's mm -hmm. what they call this. Yeah. And so you would take it, and you, it would have some kind of, they call it batting. Batting. Yeah, in between. And depending on how, what kind of batting you want to use, it's usually some kind of polyester, well, fiber like fill something. Polyester. Cotton, <laughs> something. Uh, well, actually, here's... It would be some kind of filling whatever you needed to use. This is what I usually use. Warm and natural. Okay, so that's that's thick. Well, Look at that. it's a king size. Oh. It's a king size. And they sell all different kinds. Oh yeah, they so, sell from crib to king. Yeah, but the materials, there's all kinds of different materials you could do, oh, yeah. how, depending on how warm, warm yeah, you want it. Yeah, and then I've got some more that's called here. That is called Hobbs. It's not as much cotton in it. Okay. It's more of a polyester kind of... Well, it's got a little polyester feel. I think it's supposed to be 80% cotton. Right. The rest is... Uh, and you put it in, and then you got to tat it on the back so that it doesn't move. Yeah. And you put something on the back. Most people put like a muslin or a, some kind this of... This is what's going on in the back of that. So it's a fabric, it's just a normal, okay, that's a nice looking, but let's look at the muslin, I mean the color. Yeah. So you'd put some kind of fabric, lay it down on the back, tack it all on, uh, baste it is what it's called, right? Yeah. What I, what I meant, this is not going to be the backing, it's going to be the binding. Oh, the binding is the... Is this fabric here. And that, the binding is this part? Yes, what you put around the edge. The edge, mm -hmm. which would be like this. That's a binding? Yes. Oops, mm -hmm. can't see it on my video. That's a binding, this part right here. So that's going to be that. And then the back was going to be like a muslin. It's muslin. It's a solid white muslin. Yes. Muslin. Uh -huh. And these are called string quilts. And, the, and they can be all different kinds. Like they could do this way. It depends on what the, what the quilter wants to do. Right. And you get to pick whatever. And a lot of them will do this. They'll do this with leftovers. Right. And you're just trying to... Well, there's all kinds of styles, I obviously. I almost threw these all away. And <laughs> I've seen people do things like this with ties. Oh, yeah. Man's ties or um, uh, narrow, like, ribbons of some sort. Yeah. Just some kind of, any kind of fabric that you can, you can well, put together. This lady I know, her husband was a minister uh -huh. for, uh, gosh, I don't know how many years. And he had so many ties and she had this one lady make a quilt top out of his, or her, her granddaughter had uh, her grandfather's uh, ties, had a quilt made out of it. Uh -huh. And the lady that made it, she said, I will ever do this kind of quilt again. Was it silty, silk? And that was kind yeah, of a problem, and, polyesters? And yeah, and she used, she used the top part, you know, that's larger for the center of mm -hmm. the quilt. And then in each corner, she used the other side of the tie, which was narrow, oh. and put it on all four corners. I still think that fabric would be just a pain to sew. If it's the, you know. Silky. Yeah, I think that would be a problem. Yeah. So you can see how this looks, if you're looking at this. So what each of these little boxes so you're thinking in your mind, okay, I wanted to have this color in the middle as an X, 
and it's not going to be perfect and that's kind of the joy of it that it isn't perfect yeah and so you you start off with your you, you got to have them all kind of in mind what you're going to do that's going to be the center and then you piece it all together and, yeah. and there's all kinds and you can see how it's mismatched in here and that's that's the fun you don't care what you put next to it yeah it's it you i think you go light dark light dark don't you yeah, isn't that the kind can, of the idea yeah you can do well here i've got these two darks together but i don't over here so this is scrap because it's scrap you didn't you didn't waste fabric in mm -hmm. the 30s and no you used whatever you you had and and the woman would make these, this was a social thing. Quilting was social, right? It was more for where, it was a woman thing. They'd get together and gossip and yeah. share. About one day every week. Everybody would come to somebody's house or down to like the town hall or the church or. People's houses. And somebody would be working on a quilt. I and remember everybody. when they would do it at uh, the house. Well, they had some rings mm -hmm. up in the ceiling and they had I don't I don't remember what it was that came down and had uh, was attached to the uh, two frame. by four two by four frames right yeah and uh, they would be two women on one side and two women over here and maybe one on each end and they'd all be quilting and so they're quilting time. not it's already pieced the item is whatever pieced right. so it's, you bring it into a quilting bee and it would take a oh it might take two three weeks because at the end of the day when they quit they rolled it up and it was up up in the, the ceiling. ceiling and that's how my mom did it she had that big family room and my dad had rigged it so that in the corners there was some kind of hooks yeah mm -hmm. and then she, it would lower down so when she was starting you had this big frame, the size of a queen size bed, completely stretched out, and you would tack it on on all the sides, and you would sew it, yeah. and then it was attached to like a two by four, and then as she quilted each row by row, she'd turn it, she'd twist the two by four, and it became a, and that kept it tight, and then you and then it would slowly take up half of the room, and then a quarter of the room, and then you were done. And then you would add all the rest of things you had yeah. to do. And women would do this, like I said, for social reasons, and because, um, and passing it on. Yeah, they used to have, I guess they still do, I don't know, but they used to have what they call home extension clubs where women would get together mm -hmm. and they did community service. If someone got sick, they would go and help them and all of that type of thing. And it would, and so people needed these obviously because it was cold. Well, yeah, you had to have. <laughs> you had to have a lot, and women would do it for their for their um, to get married, right? They well, they a when you were going to get married used to give like a couple had a daughter got married, they'd give them a quilt. Didn't want to freeze to death. Mm. <laughs> but that's what they would do, and so you would get a dowry like of linens, yeah. right? And some women, I thought would work on their linens for a few years oh, trying yeah. to they prepare for their marriage hope chest. that's what it was called a hope chest because you're yeah. hoping for a hope chest hoping for marriage I never it, had <laughs> but if you opened it up you would find pillowcases and oh, yeah. sheets doilies you know stuff like that you wouldn't usually find Did like use in a home yeah you wouldn't find things like utensils and stuff would you not you normally huh? no it would be fabric stuff and yeah yeah. Maybe baby stuff? I don't know about baby stuff. It was more... Uh, they wouldn't be uh, planning that far ahead? <laughs> <laughs> or they would get the gift when the when they got pregnant. Somebody would give them a gift well, of the knitted LEDs things. Well, the had a shower for them. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. So, and then over here on the bed, you've got some more fabrics. Is this because you're trying some new other things? Well, or these no, are shirts? that's... This is like a t-shirt material. That's... That's t-shirts I was given the girls. Oh, I, I mean, thought it was fabric. Because you could make them out of anything. Oh, yeah. Anything that could be sewed. My mom made them out of uh, my old jeans. and Not jeans, but uh, I used to wear polyester pants back in the oh, 70s. Yeah. They were awful. And she made me an Afghan, I mean, a quilt. Ugly as heck. Made out of all my old clothes, pants. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the ugliest thing in the world. I was embarrassed. And now it's one of my favorite quilts. Mm -hmm. It's not pretty, but it's warm as heck. Yeah. And it's... 
it's actually kind of more fashionable now compared to what it used to be. Well, I, uh, after Mother and Lucy both died, uh, I took their dresses. Oh, yeah. And made quilts. And I didn't put batting in it. I just, you know, both sides were the fabric of the... Oh. You know, and then I just sewed down, you know. And that's one of my favorites. My mom's, my favorite of my mom's was she had, I call it the boy quilt. And I have a video of this too. Of um, It was uh, probably made in 1935, something like that. 30, 39 maybe. My mom was a teenager. And it was Muslim. And she had embroidered boys' names all over the oh. quilt. But it had the first name and an initial for the last name. 